But how would that even work in this scenario? Year 23 suggests we take a hefty chunk, 80% to be exact, of that $200 trillion AI market. Hold on, so we're talking about $160 trillion with a T. You got it. And we take that money and we just hand it out. Give it to people. <laughs> like, everyone. Everyone. In this model, every single person, job or no job, would get a yearly income of, drumroll please, $763,500. Okay, you need to take a breath. Our listeners might have just passed out. That's more money than most people see in their lifetime right now. It's a mind-boggling figure, no doubt. But ER23 argues that, look, as AI gets even smarter, a lot of the jobs we do now, they're just gonna disappear, yeah. automated out of existence. So we're not just talking about a safety net here, we're talking about like a whole system reboot, yeah. work as we know it, just gone. That's the theory. Wow, but I mean, yeah. if nobody has to work, what do we do all day? Aha, uh -huh. now you're asking the really big questions and that's what makes this whole thing so fascinating. It goes way beyond just economics, right? What happens to our sense of purpose, our social structures, if work isn't the center of it all anymore? Man, that's a question we're gonna unpack as we keep diving deeper. I think my brain just did a backflip. So we're in this world, right? Money to work, everyone's rolling in cash, but what do we actually do with ourselves? like all day, every day. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? We're talking about a fundamental shift in what it means to be human. I mean, for centuries, work has been IT, you know? Yeah. Income, structure, who you are even. Totally. It's not like we can all just switch gears and become like philosophers overnight, right? There's gotta be some kind of adjustment, period. Oh, absolutely. ERO 23 even talks about the, this massive societal adaptation. Think about it, people struggling to find purpose outside of work, maybe a dip in motivation and productivity, could even lead to social unrest if it's not handled right. Like we're navigating a whole new world, no map, no compass. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes you nervous to think about, right? This valley is something to consider. But okay, let's be optimistic for a second. Let's say we figure out this whole no more jobs thing. What else could change? I mean, we've got endless resources, everyone's got money. What happens then? Well, for one, imagine a world without poverty, like gone. Basic needs food, housing, healthcare, all of it guaranteed. Imagine what that does to crime rates. Homelessness. It's hard to even picture, right? Those problems feel so deeply ingrained. Right. Requires a total mind shift. But the potential is huge GE. No more poverty means healthcare transforms too. It's not just about fixing problems when they happen, it's about preventing them in the first place. Regular checkups, early interventions, the best treatments. Okay, so longer, healthier lives, no nine to five grind. Sounds pretty utopian so far. But wouldn't we miss, I don't know, the feeling of accomplishment? the drive that comes from chasing a career. That's the big question, right? Does work, even the way it is now, fulfill something essential in us? Or could this new world unlock different kinds of fulfillment? Like what? Give some examples. Think about it. A massive surge in entrepreneurship. Everyone's got the financial security to chase their dreams, start their own thing. Arts, music, literature could explode those fields that often struggle when everyone's got to punch the clock. So instead of Thank God it's Friday, it's choose your own adventure every single day. I could definitely get on board with that. But let's not forget, this whole thing hinges on AI becoming smarter than us. <laughs> and well, that opens up a whole new can of worms, doesn't it? It sure does. Euro 23 paints an optimistic picture, but we gotta be real about the risks of creating something potentially more intelligent than ourselves. But that, my friend, is a conversation for another time. Okay, now we're getting into some real sci-fi territory. We've been talking AI changing the world as we know it, but what happens when we create something, like, way smarter than us? The ultimate wild card, right? It's called a singularity, this point where AI zooms past human intelligence and everything changes fast. Exciting and kind of terrifying at the same time. Exhilarating because of the potential, for sure, but terrifying because well, we're talking about creating our own successors, right? Yeah. What's to stop a super intelligent AI from deciding humans are obsolete? The billion dollar question. No easy answer. <laughs> That's why this whole conversation about AI safety and ethics, it's not just some side issue, it's crucial, especially as we go further down this road. So how do we even begin to make sure that something smarter than us still sees value in humanity? It's a huge challenge, no doubt. Part of it has to be building in safeguards, like right from the start. When we're developing these AI systems, we gotta make sure they're aligned with human values, even as they learn and grow. So it's like raising a kid, almost. Instilling the right values early on. In a way, yeah, but way more complex. We're talking about something that could potentially outthink us on every level. Maybe. It's not just about technical safeguards either. We gotta be really careful about the goals we set for AI, the problems we're asking it to solve. If we're not, we could end up creating something that's super efficient, 
Yeah, but at the expense of human well-being, even if that's not what we intended. Makes you think, right? And honestly, we can barely get along with each other sometimes. So how are we supposed to create some kind of global cooperation around AI when there's already so much distrust and competition? You're not wrong. It's a tall order, for sure. But just as the challenges are huge, so are the potential payoffs. Imagine AI helping us tackle climate change, coming up with cures for diseases, unlocking scientific mysteries we can't even imagine right now. Okay, that part does sound pretty amazing. Right, but the key is we had to approach this with like careful optimism and a real commitment to talking to each other, working together. So it's not just about building a better AI, it's about building a better future together with AI as a partner. Exactly, and that means changing how we think about technology, about progress, even about our place in the universe. Wow, we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. From the mind-blowing economics of an AI-powered world to the philosophical questions of, like, what does it even mean to be human if we don't have to work? We've barely scratched the surface, really. But hopefully we've given our listeners a lot to chew on. Right. The future isn't set in stone. It's being shaped right now by the choices we make, the conversations we have. The values we fight for. Exactly. So to everyone listening, as we wrap up, yeah. what kind of future do you want to be 